my draft physics video comments. Uh, not even on my video, <laughs> some of them anyway. Hopefully I'll get to the ones on my channel. Uh, but also they made a snarky video to dissident science guy. And I don't, you know, I don't even know how he thinks dissident science guy would even be bothered or, you know, paying any attention to this obnoxious crap. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, just accusing him of um, somehow not being clear about some or something about how why how he's not a scientist or he's not a critical thinker and sometimes he has to have credentials and the guy did say he has a BS in mathematics and he has a master's in linguistics so what else do you need in that, in that category but again this whole obnoxious bigotry against people who are self-taught especially in this age you know like the last decade for sure the, the volume of information available online is incredible. I, I mean, I, you know, you can self-learn programming languages, all kinds of things. And it's just obnoxious to be talking about credentials as an argument. When what you should say is, um, look, I've tested you on a couple of theoretical concepts and you're completely ignorant on them or something like that. But you can't just sit there and get this blanket statement because somebody didn't get an official degree in something. It means they don't know what they're doing. I mean, I know a ton of computer programmers who have degrees in philosophy and other bullshit and are really competent computer programmers. I mean, Puro might even fall into that category. He might not have a degree in computer science. I mean, this is just bullshit. I mean, fucking bullshit. So anyway, these comments are just obnoxious. Uh, you know, this guy is a complete moron, a quack of the highest degree. By the way, he says specifically his theory doesn't involve any math. What a surprise. Look, you, know, you can certainly have a description of how something functions without a formula. You can understand, say, gravity without understanding Einstein's field equations. Likewise, you can understand any interaction. Um, you know, just watching some videos on damping and the math for, you know, how things, how friction and other forces slow something, something repetitive down, periodic. Um, you know, yeah, they have math for all that, but the math is so strangled. It's incredibly strangled. But you can certainly, as a concept, understand <laughs> that little by little, the, the, the forces are being eaten away, okay, by heat or some other, some other loss, where the vibration, the, the impetus for it, the, the complex relationship between gravity and the switches in momentum of a pendulum, for example, and you can figure it out as a model. You don't have to, under you don't have to know mathematics to understand function and this whole idea that physics is math is just <laughs> it's so wrong-headed physics is a description of the model you could set up a whole Rube Goldberg um, device you could set up dominoes and you can sort of know the mathematics is well the dominoes have to be close enough together and when it falls it has to hit enough of the other domino and has to hit it in the right direction you can you can get that through approximations. You don't need complex mathematical formulas to set it up. Just like with the Rube Goldberg complex, you can have an incredibly complex thing. And you can do it just by logic. You can understand, well, the bowling ball has to hit the pin, knock the pin over, the pin falls down into the bucket. You can just know by doing it over a few hundred times, yeah, it works. You don't have to know the math. So, I mean, it's just so, you just want to say, fuck you, fuck you, F shove your mathematics up your ass. It's not describing how it functions. Again, so we're back to Newton, okay? Newton said, look, I'll give you a formula that's pretty damn close to um, what you're going to end up with as a product. <clears throat> but it doesn't say anything about how it happens, because I don't know how it happens. I don't know what causes, all right? I just know that you can mathematically understand uh, initial conditions and effects, cause and effect, in a, in a, and, and you can formalize the 
what happens over time. But that's that's not describing how it happens or why it happens. And those are the, or the ultimately the questions that really need to be answered. So yeah, fuck you. Um, what is the price? Excuse me while I go pull a new non-math theory out of my ass. Well, again, you don't have the guts to actually test it. Now, now I'll, I'll, I'll grant you. Uh, I mean, I've already called the dissident science guy on this whole thing of talking about a theory he's not yet willing to present. I mean, that's just sort of bogus. That's kind of unscientific. <laughs> oh, I promise. Uh, yeah, I, I, we got it all. No, that's not good enough. You don't talk about it till you're ready to produce it. Um, in my opinion. I mean, you don't talk about it, like, aggressively. <laughs> you know, argue it aggressively. Um, you know, it's just kind of, you know, I promise. Any day now. Yeah, well, fuck that. Um, uh, it should only take a few minutes. Yeah, so again, so go ahead and pull one out of your ass. Let me see you do it. Let's see you just, let me see you pull a theory out that can't be torn down really simply, okay? And based on simple rules. And so if the dissident science guy, you know, doesn't have something durable, then you can point that out. But this, this idiotic notion that you just say, forget it, we don't even, we don't even want to uh, apply any test at all. We're just going to assume it's wrong. It's just bullshit. It's just cheap, lazy, uh, uh, garbage as rhetoric. Anyway, <clears throat> so this John Reynolds says, I can tell that this distant science guy is going to be an even bigger waste of time than Gary with his science. And he puts science in quotes. Um, so again, just this assumption, and you've defeated my science with what? What argument have you, counter-argument have you made? Oh, not a single one. Just listening to him talk about the LHC makes me realize he does not <coughs> operate on any level of reality. So again, whatever that means. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how, how so exactly? I mean, I bet he understands the physics of it better than you do. And so there is no way to find pr premises you can agree with. Well, his argument is a simple one, that Einstein predicts that as mass accelerates, it, it, it gains mass. And theoretically, I think it's kind of a, a bullshit thing to even argue anyway, because <laughs> you know, there's no way to measure, you know, the, the, there's no cold state for, ma for matter. There, there's no place you can put it where, you know, you're going to get its actual, ultimate, real standing Whatever the, there's a word for that. It's lazy mass, let's say. You can only measure it when you're in a relative frame, so to speak, when you both have acceleration, and then you can relatively me measure something. Uh, or you have to measure it when a force is applied to it. So we know the specific force of gravity is applied to anything here. And so we can measure mass because we can know there's a relationship between the gravity and every atom in the object and we'll be able to detect how many atoms are in the object essentially <laughs> um, you know by the force uh, created because each each bit is going to get moved at a certain acceleration and and that acceleration will equal a certain amount of energy and you just multiply it by how many atoms there are kind of a thing well how much atomic weight there is atoms is not specific enough um, uh, how many electrons and protons? But anyway, um, there's clearly something to be debated in terms of the concept of whether something actually absorbs um, force in, in the sense of um, extra. I mean, I would argue that when you change directions, you just release mass in other directions to do the new direction. So it's just, you're just changing. If you're going this way, you're just letting go of stuff going this way, this way, and that way, and that way, and that way. <laughs> you know, you're just getting rid of stuff not going this way. So you replace one for one, and so your mass isn't going to change. But with other particles, that would be a little more complex, you could imagine, in terms of there may be a capacity to store 
force in the molecular structure and so there could be a gain in mass because it's all just extra so you're just getting extra in one direction you're not getting rid of anything right away anyway but anyway um, legitimate subject I'm not saying the dissident science guy is right to hold relativity some standard that it has to defend this one element of the theory and somehow if you can't defend that one element it's all wrong because the truth could be that some things will gain mass and some things won't and it'll depend on their molecular structure which ones will and which ones won't uh, anyway you'll just deny uh, let's see um, you'll just deny the existence of phenomena outright well again you have no evidence of that and if you have evidence of that why don't you make that argument whereas Gary tries to find an ad hoc excuse like the Tons did it like it's an ad hoc excuse to say there's matter in the universe <laughs> and there's um, that, that the little bits of matter ha each have properties and that you can identify um, that we're not made out of flesh and bones and all this bullshit were made out of uh, protons and electrons and you can know deeper truths about our reality unlike you but that's ad hoc see to be a deeper thinker than some superficial thinker like you who thinks this the end of my skin is actually like a layer of steel or something <laughs> you know but there's no the space ends and there's just this big hard layer of hard skin and that's it there's no atoms involved, there's no, the same space that's in an atom isn't the same space in between the earth and the moon. Yeah, it is. See, so if you have a brain that works, you can think of things like that and realize them. Then you won't be so retarded as you, won't be so ignorant and simple-minded. You're just a simple thinker. You're not able to think big. All right, now the real obnoxious one, this logical imperialist guy has been just a stalker. Um, and that's all he is. People shouldn't let him comment on their videos if they have any integrity, because he has nothing relevant to say. He just personally attacks. So anyway, he is obviously no scientist, otherwise he would qualify as a contender for an amendments five grand. Well, again, again, he wouldn't. Okay, somebody having a degree and being no one any old lunatic. Lots of crazy people graduate from universities, you know. <laughs> There's people with PhDs in physics who have insanely stupid notions of reality. So again, it just really doesn't work that way. Um, since the two of them don't agree, an amendum offered up $5,000 for any qualified scientist that is, is that will listen to his shit. Well, I, I didn't offer them 5000 to to listen. I offered them $5,000 to put their reputation on the line and make a counter-argument. Now, what I'm saying doesn't fit the evidence, idiot. <laughs> Jerk, stupid fuck. So you can't get anything right. You're just a perpetual and every, every, every paragraph, every sentence, just lie, lie, lie. Uh, I guess you asked two intimate questions. I guess you asked two intimate questions. What does that mean? Uh, try to ask Amendum where he got his high school diploma from. Why would somebody bother with that? And so he calls it West Mendham High School. There is no West Mendham, idiot. I live in a county, so the high school is West Morris. Okay. <laughs> So you're just too stupid. West Morris Mendham High School. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, anyway. Um, and he is, and he, he is going to, and he is <laughs> going on a rage tirade that will bite you. Again, why should my why should anything about my personal life be relevant to any of this stuff? And I'm not going to go on a tirade. I'm just going to say, "Gee, you're you're a piece of suck. You're an anonymous coward, hiding your own identity, and yet you'll what go go find data on people 
and make it more public. And your excuses is already public somewhere. So if I find, I think I have off the day's full name. So maybe I could search British records. I could find out what his property taxes are. I could find out what his income is. I could do all that stuff and I should post it because it's public information. I mean, it's just so fucking rude, you fucking piece of trash. And like I said, Hathaday deserves to get, he gets, he deserves to be docked, to, you know, and harassed by people um, if he's going to give you a voice like this. They feel like they have the right to keep their private information private, which is okay when it's not already out there. Well, again, in this age, almost everything is out there. You know, it's really difficult for somebody to keep everything private. And if you trolls think you have a right to, like I said, uh, just, you know, play this distraction game of I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mischaracterize your life and force you to defend your life because I'm going to misrepresent the truth. I'm going to lie about you and force you to correct my lies. And what kind of crap is that? I mean, I don't give a shit one way or the other. I'm just saying I, I'm not going to let you lie about me. I mean, why should I feel good about that? You're a fucking liar. Okay, and here's an example. I know exactly where Amindam lives and have even phoned him a couple of times. So he phoned me a couple of times. That's his claim. Um, I'm sure I've been called by a lot of cranks, so uh, it certainly could have happened. I don't know him from any of the other drunk loonies. But anyway, since all this is public information, again, it's, it's really not very accessible information. And it's you people who make it accessible. Okay, it's you people who wish to do malicious harm to people that make it accessible. I mean, what you're doing is breaking the law. And it's just unfortunate we don't have any legal system that's efficient enough to make it practical for somebody to defend their civil rights. I have a civil right not to have you maliciously attempt to fuck with my life. And you're doing it maliciously, asshole. You're not doing it for anybody's public knowledge or benefit. You're doing it to harass me. You're a stalker, you fucking kook. Um, although when Menem told me that he wants to kill me now, that never happened. But I'm sure you would have recorded these calls, right? I mean, you're the type. So I'll give you permission. You have my permission to play any recorded phone calls you have between me and you. Because I never threatened to kill you. Unless you first said, <laughs> you know, you're going to come to my house or do something else that is really invasive. So I'm just giving you fair warning. I never said, I'm going to kill you. Do you really think, like anybody listening, do you really think it would be logical for me when kooks and drunks call me, for me to tell them I'm going to kill them? <laughs> you know, like that's going to work on a stalker? I don't think so. All right, so that didn't happen. Uh, so I'd rather go, <clears throat> so I'd rather go not down there. That's a really brilliant sentence. You must be a scientist to write sentences like that since I don't want to get killed. So again, this this notion that I somehow make threats and that I threaten this idiot who admits he called me, all right, without any invitation to do so on my personal phone. Amazing. Uh, and Mendham is a brash fuck. No, I'm a man, okay, who doesn't play these little weasel games all right I, I you know I'm a stand-up kind of person and you're a sneaky little weaselly long necks piece of creepy crud <laughs> you know, and, and a dangerous one at that well I'll admit that you know I'm dangerous like uh, probably Willie Mammoth would be dangerous that is it'd be nice and friendly if you just come over and give him an apple you, know, you pet their fur a little bit or something, but it, you know, you start sticking, you know, spears up their ass, then yeah, they might stomp you. You stupid little fuck. I think I only go to New Jersey to do things to his grave. Well, you're not gonna find a grave asshole, so good luck with that. Uh, when he's dead, uh, then he cannot harass me any longer since he is dead. Hmm. So, he says, I can't or not harass him any longer. I mean, just an amazing thing for some idiot to say. 
when I never did anything to this asshole but say, fuck off, leave me alone. Not allowed to do that. And this asshole, Hoffa Bay, says good point to this piece of shit of a comment. And then this idiot says, I'll join you, whatever that means. So then Hathaday says, so Hathaday likes lying about people, you know, you know, it's what pedophiles do most of the time, you know, when they're not raping babies, you know, they just spend their time on the internet lying. Um, he didn't get his diploma, did he? I mean, it's just idiotic. <laughs> like it would matter if I did or didn't. You know, the amazing atheist didn't get his diploma and I'd say he's, as, although he's the dumbest motherfucker, almost, on Earth, he's still smarter than you somehow. I mean, it's amazing. A lot smarter. Um, I recall him saying he crashed out of high school, or at least didn't do well in exams. So he recalls something that's completely untrue. So that's just completely false. I basically, um, I was working when I was in high school the last two years. And, um, well, I was working at a regular job. Fact is, I was working delivering newspapers since I was 11. So every afternoon I had to, to you know, deliver newspapers. Um, but I got a, I had a real eight hour, you know, 12 hour shift job when I was 15. And, um, you know, I start off two days a week, then three days, then four days. And, you know, it was, it was, so by the end of high school, I was, pretty much working a full-time job and um, and I was also smoking pot <laughs> and drinking and so yeah I just didn't give a shit about school much didn't go to it very often and so, and yet I graduated in the top fifth in my class and I never you know my locker in school was just hilarious because I never opened it, it never I just threw the books in there in the beginning of the year <laughs> that was it just full of garbage it was a garbage can. I never took anything home. Never, never did any homework. Nothing. Anyway. So, yes. So I did well on exams, actually. Even though I didn't pay any attention. Now, I did flunk, technically, physics. <laughs> okay, so that is iron, ironic. I mean, not technically. Technically, I passed because I appealed. But I got failed because the teacher was this little bow tie wearing weaselly little fuckhead and he hated my fucking guts and you know I was I was I had a chick as a partner and you know, I was sort of in love and I would draw bongs on the table all day I just did the, the, the guy was a little weaselly prick and so that's why I, I failed physics but I appealed and I won the appeal because he actually had to verbally test me in front of the principal <laughs> and when he verbally tested me I passed the test so you see that's how it works out. So he couldn't prove his case that I didn't learn anything. Um, so he couldn't give me an F. I should have probably gotten a C, but like I said, I did get elevated to a D. But anyway, is this all important details for any of you assholes to know? I mean, is this really, is this your business somehow, you fucking cunts? So, logical empiricist again. No, nah, I believe that draft science I came in actually got a high school diploma. Joel, oh, gee, well, you got one fact right. He said something about having to get to work straight after high school once and therefore did not go to college. No, that's not the reason why I didn't go to college. So yes, I, I, I applied at a few schools. I don't remember exactly which ones, but I remember MIT and the one I got clearly accepted at was LSU. Now, MIT wanted me to take the SATs again and they wanted me to go to some summer program. But the problem was MIT was expensive as fuck. So the decision was made once I got accepted at LSU, which was like one third the price. Uh, yeah, fuck MIT. <laughs> um, I'll go play football in Louisiana, which, you know, suited me in a sense because, you know, I like it warm. So there was other reasons to, you know, like not going to the more prestigious school. And a lot of this my father did, so, you know, I have to give him credit because he actually, he actually made, made me seem a worthy uh, candidate. So, um, kudos to him for that one. Uh, but, you know, his father did the same thing for him, actually, so. 
I guess that's why he did it. But anyway, <clears throat> um, so I was all set to go to college. I, mean, I was two months away from leaving for college, and I had an anxiety disorder, and it was getting worse and worse. And I, you know, I could barely drive during the day. Um, you know, I couldn't do stair, you know, big staircases. I couldn't do closed spaces. I mean, I, I was claustrophobic, and um, it was really bad. And uh, I was nauseous all the time. And, uh, you know, I just couldn't see spending the money if I wasn't healthier. <laughs> and so I figured I'd wait a year because I just couldn't handle it. And um, I didn't get better. So I didn't go to college. So fuck you. I mean, just fuck, fuck, fuck you. You just, you just can't get cancer soon enough and get off this fucking planet because you're just such a useless cunt to be dragging this crap up like this is somehow relevant. It really isn't. You piece of shit. All right. Um, Emendum is a smart fucker. Yeah, so why are you wasting the smart fucker's time with this crap? Why are you doing that? Do you think that's what a... You, if you're supposed to be like a smart person, this is what your smart people should be doing, wasting their time like this, harassing people? You fucking asshole. Otherwise, I not, would not be watching. Wasn't well, that ironic? You harass people, you watch because you think they're smart. You think that makes any fucking sense at all, you crazy fuck? You don't think you should maybe go seek professional help? You are somebody who at least has done some self-learning in psychology that might explain to you how your behavior is retarded. He has a lot of practical knowledge come by as a car mechanic. Yeah, well, again, yes, all this stuff come by by doing. And, you, and these fuckers imply that I sat around doing nothing. He also had read all those National Geographic uh, magazines back on his shelf there. You know, I read a lot more than there are there. There's actually 700 editions. <laughs> and I, uh, so, but regardless, again, not relevant. I, I read a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of stuff worth reading I read. The problem with Mendham is not his intelligence, it is his hubris that he might be actually smarter than the whole physics community combined, which is nonsense in, today, in, in today's day of age. I'd say it's even more likely in today's age, because nobody's putting these people to any standards, okay? They're not, they don't have to f defend any of the crap they're doing. Newton had to defend everything he said, everything he suggested. He was constantly being... I'm challenged by people with alternative theories. This fucking religious dogma of physics, okay, is shoved down everybody's throat, and nobody in the community has the balls to stake their reputation on challenging any of it. Ugh. I mean, I'm going to embarrass the fuck out of all of you assholes, and especially pukes like you, who just type this crap as if it's not possible that the system could be failing to properly test theories. What test did the LIGO have to go through? Where was any of the consequences of their theory tested? Show me the website somewhere where there's some sort of conversation about the new theory, okay, that you can convert matter into bent space. Show me that. You fuck, and then tell me how these people are infallible. Show me where they they've they've gone through any standards, where any standards were applied at all, any inspection at all, by the system. Oh, fuck you. I'm not sure, but I mean, I might even have some college a month or two. Uh, well, I have more than that now, just because I've watched a lot of college lectures, idiot. After that, he was an <coughs> autodidactic, well, whatever. After retiring on his social pension, uh, well, again, that didn't happen for years till years later anyway, but that, again, is none of your business. He must have had a lot of free time on his hands. So, again, this, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, I spent a lot of time learning. So, you don't learn, you can't fix cars unless you fix a lot of cars. 
you can't uh, do roofing or you know well anyway or carpentry or you can't do any of this stuff you know install furnaces unless you do it idiot so obviously I was spending a lot of time doing things where he could have read some things origin of species stuff then in 2006 the men exchanged all other communication channels and media outlets for YouTube whatever that means and has been on the internet ever since, several hours a day. Like I said, I was on the internet from the inception of the internet, retard. Back in the MS-DOS, uh, you know, put your phone in the cradle days. It must have been a very intense life in Mendham has led. Well, it's a life, I know. Everybody's life's intense, retard. Don't you feel like your life's a little intense sometimes? If there is a job opening for an amendum biographer, I gladly would jump at the opportunity. Well, even though the concept of biographer, biographies being written by bigoted creepoids like you, is it just another word they ought to throw in the garbage? Because obviously it won't be a biography, it'll be a fucking hackockery. <laughs> it'll be just lieockery. Uh, a lot can be constructed from his old videos, though, where from time to time, you learn more about the man's past bit wise, whatever that means, but a coherent volume of a minimum's life still missing. Yes, you, you need to know every little poo, do you? Every time I took a stinky, you need to you need to know the details. Look, I'd ask the man myself if I could do a biography together, but then I believe I know that the project would be a disaster for me, even if he finally would settle to do this project with me. I just don't even see the point. I mean, somebody asked that in the in Mendham comments of whether I keep a journal. Even if I kept a journal, there's no way to fully <laughs> document a day in the life. You know, all the thoughts and, you know, all the, the overlaying circumstances that are around you at any one moment, you know, uh, there's just no, there's no way to encapsulate that into a couple of paragraphs, and to do justice to the reality. It's it's like writing history. There's just so much to it. You know, there's so much undercurrents and so much, you know, how thick was the air? <laughs> you know what? what yeah, you know, there's just so much to it. So what's the point? I think for a while to come to ask a man about doing an autobiography for a man, then he, uh, time is ripe. She is also quite fascinated by his crude charm, whatever that means. Well, that was just a horrible waste of time. I mean, all this personal crap. So off the day again, I call BS on Gary's education. Fantastic of you. He also says he had offers to go to prestigious universities. You aren't offered to go, but you know you do ask to go, and they say yes, they accept you. So yes, I was accepted at LSU without qualification. I had to do nothing else. I was accepted. He left school to work at a diner, so that didn't happen. I, I never left school to do that. I was already working since the time I was 15 at the, at a, you know, six million dollar restaurant, I mean a big fucking restaurant, big, like one of the top 15 restaurants in New Jersey at the time, it was probably in the, I, I should say top 10, it might have been in the top five, but regardless. Anyway, and the owner screwed him somehow, so I don't know where you got that from, the owner was an asshole, and so yeah, it was sucked working for him and I finally quit. Uh, and worked at another very nice restaurant. He had um, some point got to, to work in a machine shop. Yes, that was very good. So yeah, so uh, when I didn't go to college um, and I was having trouble, you know, doing the day job thing, and um, even working in restaurants was getting difficult. So um, for a trying to think. So yes, yeah, so I, I, I was still, um, I'd still work nights in restaurants and um, a, a part-time, well I actually moved out of my parents' house and so that's what precipitated the whole thing, but I don't want to get into that. 
uh, I don't want to get into personal, I don't want to get into, anyway, I ended up working in the machine shop. And it wasn't just a machine shop, I should have called it what it is. I mean, it was a, it was a company that developed um, um, robots, basically, um, uh, machines to um, automate processes. So it, we made machines that were for like printing. You know, when you had to do three color printing, you have to put the, the, the roll of material through the printer three times back in those days, okay, for the three colors. So each time they had to be lined up perfectly. Nothing could be out of alignment or you got a shitty print job. And so we made guides, edge guides, that were, you know, using an LED, and, you know, which were new back then. <laughs> Um, and a photoresistor to do the detecting and then the electronics would keep the machine, it would move it through the printing process evenly. And um, so it made those kinds of machines. So yes, I, I machined the front panels for those and then I did the circuit boards and blah 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 blah. Um, but I also did a lot of <laughs> A lot, I was also part of conversations about um, how to, you know, fix problems. So something would come up like, you know, this electrocutes you, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, this the, the panel gets, uh, you get a shock from the panel, you know, when you have these three switches on, you know, or something like that. And so I would do some, you know, so yeah, we got to fix that. Um, but anyway. And so I even did something. Well, I'll, I'll read some more of this shit, but I mean, it's just bullshit. Um, some uh, machine shop doing simple grunt work. So again, I didn't do simple work. It was actually, you know, I don't, you probably haven't been to a machine shop, but you can get your fucking head ripped off and your arms ripped off pretty fucking easy. Um, these are 10,000 pound kind of lathes and shit. I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't exactly um, grunt work. You wouldn't let somebody grunty do it, okay, <laughs> because they get killed. So you had to have your wits about you. You know, especially milling aluminum, for fuck's sake. Uh, oh, it's terrible. Soft, but, man, fucking machines love to eat that crap. Um, never received any formal training in mechanics or electronics. All self-taught, I believe. Like, it's a bad thing. You know, like actually learning by doing is a bad thing. When my opinion is the best way to learn anything. So, just completely upside down perversion of reality. Now, it's an edited comment. I thought I remember some other little derogatory statement. But anyway, so, so I will explain. Um, well, I'll read through some more of this. I mean, it's just this whole time, like, I, I like some, somehow I didn't accomplish anything or I didn't do anything. The truth is that, you know, the, the business was not doing very well when I worked there, so, you know, it's, it's, I wasn't even getting, you know, paid reasonably, and, you know, but I, I really enjoyed the work. <laughs> That's a really wrong way to say it. Um, I, I needed to do something, and so that was, it was good work to be doing. I liked the mechanical things, so this was a good place for me to work. I liked the environment. And, um, um, well, there's so much to it. Uh, you know, personality is involved. A cat I ended up with was, you know, I got from there because, it, you know, a cat just loved me to pieces. But anyway, regardless, it doesn't matter. Um, so anyway, uh, so, so he's talking like I didn't do anything, but I did. And, and, you know, one of my ideas, so I was seven, 18 at the time. And, um, you know, I, <coughs> so the, the, they also made controllers for clear film or other kinds of film and like even the tape you know memorex or something and to locate any defects in the film that is to see holes in it or tears or any kind of defect and um, the problem was is you know the the photoresistors weren't fast enough so they had to kind of run the machine kind of slow to pick up the signal and it wasn't enough of a signal and um, so um, I actually came up with the idea of using photovoltaics. See, because you had to go across the entire film. Say the film was, see, it was okay for 
small things, but the film, the big rolls, you know, be, it would be a meter across or more. And, um, you know, there just wasn't a way to make the electronics pick up enough, you know, without having, without having a whole amplifier on everything. Well, anyway, I don't want to go into the specifics. But anyway, I came up, I, me, came up, you know, the idea of instead of using photoresistors, of using a photovoltaic cell, right? And so this is back in 19... 78, 79, 1979. So in 1979, I not only knew what photovoltaics were, I had played around with them and knew that they were pretty sensitive to low light, you know, just a few photons. And um, so anyway, and it, you know, so, you know, that idea ended up developing back then a machine that probably cost ten or twelve thousand dollars which is a lot of money and um, probably saved the business <laughs> so you know you can rag on how how I'm just a, a grunter um, but fuck you I was always pretty clever and you're an asshole and you probably always were one jackass um, so you take the time to find out his number and harass him on it, and yet he is the one harassing you, question mark. I find this uh, laughably stupid. Well, it's even worse than laughably stupid. It's, it's, you know, he's obviously a psychotic lunatic. That he thinks it's logical to accuse me of harassing him. Um, the title of my Amendum biography will be Gary in Mendham, A Life in Mendham. Well, that would be the dumbest title in the history of the universe because my life isn't a life in Mendham. It's a life in other places, uh, but whatever. Uh, though he spent several formative years outside New Jersey and came back in later years. Or, Gary and Mendham, a life on YouTube. Well, another pile of nothing is a statement. Um, you, I, I'm, I'm not a reflection of YouTube. <laughs> you know, I was already me before I got to YouTube, idiot. God, you're such a stupid, creepy, dumb fuck. Um, so, um, at Rob C. Yeah, he was very surely, surly and surely, he was very surely and rude. <sighs> yeah. No, that's not true. You know, it's just not. I'm not rude to people first, ever. Okay. So Rob C. says, uh, You are clearly delusional. You harassed the man on his personal phone. He called you on the shit. Uh, again, I didn't even call him on the shit, so that didn't happen. So if he has a, you say if he has a recording of it, you'll find out. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do anything um, out of line. Um, so then, Logical imperialist. And then him blocked me on all my accounts one day and took away my First Amendment rights. So he thinks it's his First Amendment right to harass me on my videos. Uh, just amazing. Now, your First Amendment right is to make a video channel of your own, then harass me with it in public, and then I'll sue you. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> you fucking lunatic. I wanted to know why I was blocked. I called him up. You know, there's some reason why he has to, some reason why he's asking why he blocked me. I told him not to block me. He wouldn't listen. Amazing. I mean, just amazing. Uh, how is Amendum some flapjacker ass? How is Amendum harassing you, if I may ask? And you would write this alleged harasser of yours biography? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's see, logical pyramid. Do you have the first minute right to come to your bedroom and start shouting, cunt, 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 cunt? I don't think so, jackass. Well, whatever, I don't think that that's exactly a comparable analogy, but, um, there's a difference between, um, like I said, publishing a book in a library, everybody has a right to do that, and then somebody else graffitiing on it. I mean, <laughs> shit, those are two different things. Uh, so anyway. So, we had this other new asshole, the alternative case. He's a douche. But I don't know if we have enough time. Yeah, we've got enough time. 
As usual, I see the counter the centers only have credentials to bring into question. So now he's harassing Hoffaday for, yes, just doing the stupid credentials thing. This is not surprising, but what I would hope to find surprising is the possibility that you understand this. People of your caliber only seem to hold a sort of meta high ground while being completely oblivious to what one should normally expect as a reply. I don't know if that even makes sense. He left a bunch of comments on my video. That's the only why I'm reading this one, but it's incoherent drivel. That counter dissenters only have credentials to bring into question. I don't even know what that is. I, I, that was just rubbish. Lahafa, he says. No, I did say he provides no content. Besides all the other waste of time nonsense. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would agree that you know if you made a video asking him questions about... Um, you know, what am I, you know, because you say somebody says something, now I, I gotta, you know, if I, if I go to one of your documents and I read it and I find flaws in it, are you going to take it down? Are you going to quit using the argument? I mean, what's going to be, what, what am I going to get from my effort to point out how your claim that you're, one of your scientists has done something credible um, is going to be worth my time? You know, because a lot of the stuff he's arguing is stuff that's not, you know, yeah, go, go, go figure out how to do field equations and then test that this guy's mathematics is right. I don't think I'm going to waste my time doing that. He goes on without actually stating or claiming anything. Okay, vague references to his G1, G2 particles, but no details or specifics. What else is there to question? And again, I, it's a legitimate complaint, and I have the same complaint. If, you know, if he's going to suggest he has some something better... Um, to fill in the void. He's tearing down something. He's going to put something better in its place. And he's just promising something better. He's not necessarily showing something better. And that's sort of bullshit. All right. Noxious bullshit. Anyway. All right. So, on to my video. And uh, the assholes. So, flapjacker guy. Um... Well, let me just, you don't need to see the text. I can rest my little hands and such. Uh, if you, uh, I feel you paint a picture of scientists that makes them out to be people who don't question other scientists. Well, I think clearly that's taken place. There's very few that have spoke out about the whole invention of dark matter and the contrivancy of it. Some have said, well, they ought to slow down a little bit. They're getting way ahead of themselves. Um, but the, clearly the momentum is anything that comes out of any institution is not going to be um, critically um, judged. It's just not. I mean, I, I read an article. I just showed you that. And here you are arguing with me. I showed you an, argue, ar uh, an article posted in the New Scientist. And here, here it says, it right in it, they have a 25% margin of error. Right in the article, it admits that. And yet the headline says, it's like me saying, um, uh, Gary proves Lamborghinis faster than Porsches, right? And I do an experiment that has a 25% margin of error, and yet the difference in the speed between the cars is, let's say, 5 miles an hour. Now, how is it possible for me to be able to use that test to tell whether Lamborghinis are faster than Porsches if the margin of error is you know, 20 times larger than the thing I'm measuring. You can't see how that's idiotic science, garbage, nonsense. <laughs> what? What else do you need as, as demonstration of the fact that science doesn't work? And accept other science work with sh uh, shaky evidence. A period, and he starts a sentence with "and," except other people's, other scientists work with shaky evidence. The math of the double slit, for example. Instead of complaining, no, no, complaining about stuff that's wrong is a good thing, asshole. And the fact that you douchebags won't do any of that, except that, you know you'll complain about me and tell me what to do. <laughs> Fucking, you know, just fuck you. Instead of complaining that they have got it wrong, like you say, why don't you fix the math? 
Well, first you have to understand what's happening, and it wasn't until just a month ago or so that I realized, with the help of a diffraction gradient, um, that, um, I don't know, that's really going to show you much, but the, this thing, okay, showed me that what's really happening is the images are being um, diffracted. Whole images are moved. And uh, the slit experiments always had the look of that to me. Was you know, and you certainly you can see it with a diffraction gradient in a laser. Okay, this is just this is stuff. It, the very fact that this exists and they never point it out. You can buy lasers that have little images on them, and then they put a diffraction gradient over them, and the images you know if they have the diffraction gradient going in both directions, the little image like a star will shoot out in all directions, like a square. It'll go out in all directions, evenly spaced. They're images, okay, clearly. And in principle, it's the same mechanism, right? So I'm just saying that the slits are really just duplicates of the image of the slits. <laughs> and... Um, so doing the math is completely different. It, won't, it doesn't have anything to do with wave mechanics. It's just going to have to do with the number of electrons and how many electrons each photon hits before it gets to its location. So it's going to be simple math, as I've pointed out. The electron deflects the light a certain degrees. If the, electron hits, if the photon hits one electron, then it gets deflected four degrees. If it hits two electrons, then it gets deflected eight degrees. It's three electrons that get deflected, um, you know, 12 degrees. Not going to be complicated. But fuck you. Again, this whole idea that you point out how they're exaggerating, essentially lying about the perfection of their predictions and how perfect their math is, and you show how it isn't perfect, and it isn't reliable, and it doesn't answer the questions, and it doesn't fit. You point out how I can see the square peg isn't fitting in the round hole. And they keep hammering it in there and saying it fits. And you point it out and then assholes like you say, well, why don't you do something else? No, I think that's a perfectly valid thing to do is to point out how I can see the edges of the square peg being torn off. Fucker. Anyway, concentrate on the limited piece of QM, whatever that means, fuck you, and go from there. No. There's, the, the, every piece of QM, okay? I mean, spooky action is bullshit. I mean, every layer of the bullshit needs to be attacked. But yes, yeah, certainly I'm starting with the fucking primary layer, jackass. You understand how the two-slit experiment is the foundation of wave theory, idiot? Fuck you. I think draft science has some interesting aspects to it. I don't even know what that means. Um, but a lot of time in your videos goes to ragging on other scientists. Well, exactly where do I do that? Where? You jerk. I'm ragging on claims being made. You think they're supported by evidence. I'm claiming they're not supported by evidence. They show an image of a lensing. They don't even... That the story doesn't match the picture. That's the way the science should be done, jackass. Nobody should point out how that's fucking idiotic. I mean, I, this isn't even a rude comment, but it's so fucking stupid. Well, a lot of time in your videos, you're just going raging uh, on other scientists. Again, it doesn't that never happens. I'm talking about what they present as evidence. I'll show other people's videos. When I pointed out the thing about the polarization, they, they, they made a video doing this whole thing like it's some sort of magic. And I pointed out, no, here's the simple fix for the magic. It isn't magic. Where did I do anything wrong in that video, you fucking cunt? I read a comment under Hathaway's latest video mentioning that draft science is math weak. <laughs> and, ag and again, I'm math weak why? 
because I accept you know basic arguments about formulas like the inverse square law that there's a relationship between uh, you know time retardation and velocity I mean it's just so obnoxious um, I think video titles like uh, sea of fields of poo pooing whatever does not help in attracting collaborators well, I don't even want a collaborator asshole that is good with math yeah well fuck that I don't even you know there's just no point <laughs> you know frankly the math they do is so strangled that I just don't see any use in it. It needs to be, that's another thing, it needs to be start, they have to start over. And they have to start recognizing that, you know, using C for the speed of light, well, okay, that's a good idea. But these other things that they sit there and label, sine theta, you know, everywhere, <laughs> you know, yeah, fuck lambdas. Uh, most of your video titles lately have been totally on the point, to be fair. Yeah, so why don't you just shut the fuck up? Uh, but the raging on how scientists are willfully cheating experiments, etc., I don't think that helps. Well, it's because you're stupid. It's idiotic. Oh, oh, I, you're basically trying to point out how you have a right answer, and it's quite obvious you have a right answer because their answer is wrong. And you point out the flaws in their fucking wrong answer, jackass. That's one of the jobs you have to do. If you want to change something, you have to demonstrate how the thing that's actually in place now is broken, stupid fuck. Because nobody's going to want change if they think everything's just fine the way it is, asshole. Stupid fuckers. Alright, uh... I said some ass number no, that's Dear Gary, it looks like dark energy is entirely a fiction. So he posts a link to an article, it doesn't have it doesn't have anything to do with making anything a fiction, because it's another insanely obtuse um, you know, mathematical experiment that doesn't prove or disprove anything. And then some asshole come the alternative case says, Oh, I should mention that dark matter is not a solution to Ibador's paradox or Obador's whatever. Who cares? The subject of dark energy does not have anything to do with dark matter, you dumb fuck. So I'm deleting that. I mean, what an idiot. The, the only thing they have in common is the word dark. Otherwise, the two concepts are entirely, fundamentally, structurally, have nothing to do with each other. <sighs> It's an alternative case. I'm disappointed. You want to rebuild physics from the ground up, yet you hold one of the most standardized pieces of dogma, and one which so clearly not only left imprints in conventional science, but dissident science, such as your own, as well. And he didn't get to the point, which is the speed of light. So he thinks the speed of light is variable. And I would say, why would somebody even think that? Why bother with it? And, but I'd certainly argue that, by my theory, it would be idiotic, because if you make light go faster, then you'd increase the frequency, <laughs> number one, so that would be a giveaway. Um, and clearly it creates a huge momentum problem. All of a sudden, photons aren't photons. They aren't reliably the same thing. They aren't quanta anymore. You break all of quantum mechanics. I mean, none of the formulas can make any sense anymore. It's idiotic. You can't give light variable speed. You can't give force variable speed. It just doesn't, nothing works anymore. Um, what other reason? Um, yeah, so, and, but, and where, where is there one shred of evidence for any reason to doubt? I mean, I think most logical people understand why light travels through medium slower. It's not because the light is actually moving slower, it's because it doesn't go a straight line. I mean, a fiber optic cable is a perfect example. Light doesn't go through fiber optics at the speed of light. Okay, it's slower because it's bouncing off the sides of the fucking cable. <sighs> so, I'll delete that piece of shit. Simply everything. He types too many comments that are too stupid and vague. Hi, Eminem. Thanks for the explanation. Do you mind offering an opinion on the viability of the electric universe model? 
Sorry if this has been asked before, by the way. They don't have a model. Uh, you know, sorry to say, I mean, I couldn't find one. So if you can give me a link to their model page where they actually explain. <laughs> they're, they're like uh, Ken Wheeler. It's all hyperburloid. They, they don't give you any model of what actually is moving things together or pushing things apart. And, you know, lightning bolts, you know. Do they really think that's what happened? I mean, lightning bolts created the craters on the moon? I mean, they actually think that happened? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fucking silly. You know, sorry, but I mean, it's like almost too retarded to bother with. I mean, it's just Tesla shit, right? It's just in some sort of Tesla thing. Um, you refute David's claim by saying that the speed of light measurements have had an, uns have had an uncertainty. Um, by that logic, does that not testify that you cannot conclude that the speed of light is a constant? No, what I, I said was, is, is you can't, something's moving 3 million meters per second. Yeah, it's kind of obvious that their first tries at, at measuring that, they might have gotten it wrong, okay? Because they really didn't have the instruments to do the measurements, you dumb fuck. Um, but the ones that kind of give it away are the fact that, well, when you do it at the speed of light, Einstein's equations work, and when you don't use the right number, they don't work. Those little tests are the ones that kind of give it away that they sort of got the right number now. Dumbass. A lot closer. But the fact that they could be a few meters off out of three million, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But it wasn't because the speed of light changed. It was because the, the capacity to measure changed. The capacity of measure kind of improved in the last 200 years, don't you think? They used to measure things by how many fucking hands high it was, you jackass. Fucking idiot. Um, all right. If you want to understand religious thinking, you only need to look within your own mind. Yeah, fuck you. You want to understand an asshole, smell thy brain. <sighs> smell thyself. Uh, you say that the margin of error for the measurements of the speed of gravity are too wide. I don't know why I said that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I said a 25% margin of error means the experiment is useless. By that logic, why would you conclude that the speed of gravity is constant? I'm not using that logic, you idiot. What I'm saying is there's no experimental evidence demonstrating any reason whatsoever to doubt the constancy of the force quanta. The quant 